Mel Building Marin, our floating dream home. Hope you enjoy our look at life of building a catamaran. After our testing of the David Crane, we found a few things to improve. The frame itself was flexing a bit when you stop and start the crane mid-motion. The design allows some degree of flexing, but it seems a little too much. So we added some gassets to give more rigidity and this boosts our confidence significantly. We also had an issue with the swivel stand-up blocks we had first used. Although well within their design range, we found a slight bend in one of the brackets, most likely due to the side loading. So we opted to change the design to use 4x50mm stand-up blocks to distribute the load. We also added some holes in the gussets to hold some 150mm fenders to let the side of the tent to rest on when tied up. After testing, it was time for sanding and painting once more. Some of, the, some of the mods that we've done to our, our Dabbit crane is we replaced these little uh, stand-up blocks with slightly uh, more substantial, stronger ones. The reason being is originally we had this block sitting on here like this, and it would swivel up and down and then take the load and the cable coming through and going over to this side. There's another one over here, and that, that one would swivel up and down as well. And that would then go to the stamp tire, that one would go to the winch. But what we found out is during some testing, um, as you can see here, we, we sort of bent one a little bit. Um, so we decided that wasn't the right, the right uh, tool for the job, if you like. So in essence, what we've now done is we run a turn block here, and another turn block down here, another one over here, Another one down here, and we actually run our, our uh, winch cable runs through here, down through that one, across, back up through that one, and back off to the winch. The, uh, the other mods that we made to the, um, to the Dabbit crane is we added these little gussets in here, which helped strengthen this up a little bit, but also gave us a nice little spot there to, uh, to mount a fender, so that when the, you know, when the tender comes up, it actually sits nicely against that fender, and we'll, when we tie it in, we'll sort of pull up against it a little bit, so just a little uh, $27 fender. Um, will save any damage to the side of the, on the side of the uh, boat. Um, the other thing we did is we found when the, when the crane went up, it, um, sort of sat there and rocked a little bit you know, with the load on it. So we ended up, we bought these little bump stop robbers, which is ones that you have on the suspension of a car. And uh, we'll mount, we've mounted them there like that. So when the crane goes up and sits up against the transit, it actually puts a little bit of pressure on it. Uh, puts a little pressure on there, and then we can lock in our, 
our little uh, pelican uh, latches and uh, that stops the, the crane actually rocking. Um, so the boat actually sits a lot more stable and obviously we tie the boat back off, uh, the tender off, sorry, we tie that back off uh, to the other side of the, to the transom. We are now getting the decks ready for painting, but after spending time sanding off a 240 grid, we found a number of spots we were not happy with. This include pits and area of highs not sanded off before we did the last undercoat. In the end, we have decided that we will sand off what is needed to get a nice flat finish and we'll undercoat one more time before we top coat. Not something we were planning, but the lesson learned was using a roller that is 11 nap for undercoat can hide imperfection until you hit them with a sander. So this time we will spray the undercoat on. In preparation for spraying, we have started to seal up the doors and windows. We have typed off the areas where we will direct glaze in the windows. Then we put a plastic cover over them as well. We apologise for the shaky footage in this segment. Brian was standing inside the other boat at the time. It's kind of made us feel like we're already sailing. We also made up a foam cover to seal the four front hatches from dust and overspray during the application of the undercoat later on. It seems cows struggle to remove the double side tape cover. Might be better if he sticks to lifting heavy things. His excuse was fat fingers. Your support will definitely motivate us on our journey to get Marin into the ocean. So go ahead to give us a like, we really appreciate it. If you haven't caught up on our last episode yet, the link is right here for you. Thanks 
for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this insight to building a catamaran.